Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Just Married, and I'm sipping on some peach tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, ultramarine blue, fire red, chrome yellow, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have two drawing tools. I have a standard number two pencil and a white piece of chalk. So I'll be using both of these for drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush and I have a number three round synthetic brush and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you could switch those up if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same type and size canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our landscape. I'm gonna be using my pencil. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers and then we're just gonna connect the markers. And by the time we're done, we'll have a road and some grassy area and a mountain and a sky. <laughs> It'll be a nice, easy uh, outline for our landscape for us to start the painting and process on the next step. So I'm going to be having a big road with lots of perspective. So it's gonna be, go, be small and going off into the distance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first section off where I want my sky and my um, back mountain, and then we'll come into the road. But I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers and then we'll connect those markers. So the first marker I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself the center of the top of my canvas. Then I'm gonna to come to the right of that about I would say two, three inches, two and a half, three inches. That'll be my first little marker. The next marker is about almost two inches down on this left hand side, so somewhere in through here. This is gonna be my back mountain range. So I'm just gonna connect these two with a series of lumps and bumps. <laughs> you can have yours exactly as mine or you can have yours different than mine. It's gonna be completely up to you. There's no um, need for it to be exactly as mine, you, so you can have fun with making that go up and down as much as you want to. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another marker that's gonna be about three, three and a half inches down from here. So just so you don't go too far down the canvas, if this is, I would say, about halfway down the full side, you're gonna come um, almost a quarter way between here and the top of your canvas. So this is about quarter way, so I'm a little bit lower than that. So that'll make ensure that you don't go too far down the canvas. And then on the right hand side, I'm gonna come down a little bit higher than here. So you could even just kind of measure where you did it on here, come to the other side and go up about an inch from there and start right there. Then I'm gonna connect these two markers and this is just gonna be kind of a long, gentle kind of hill. You could even go up a little bit if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be straight. You could even make a couple of little soft bumps throughout it. Feel free to connect those as you would like to. So that's gonna be that one. The next marker that I'm gonna make 
if this is about halfway up or down my canvas, and this is about a quarter away between the two, I'm a little higher than that. So somewhere in this vicinity is my next marker. And then on the other side, I'm gonna make a mark at about the same distance from the bottom that I did this one. So I can use my pencil or whatever I have, maybe a paintbrush or something as my measuring tool and give myself another marker in through here. These two are gonna be the edges of my road as it kind of disappears. I'm gonna connect both of these markers way up top in, in uh, where this marker is in through here. So I'm gonna do this one first. This is gonna be just a scoop for a piece of land in through here. I don't want it to come halfway into my canvas. I wanna be a little bit shy of halfway. So if you find about your halfway point and then come in, I would say about two, three inches, that's gonna give you about as far in as you wanna take this. So I'm gonna do a big kind of scooping type of arcing motion to get this in like this and it's just going to kind of scoop around into here and again yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine it can take on a little bit different of a shape and then I'm going to do the same thing up into here but this is going to connect down here I want it to look like it's the road is just kind of going off into the distance so I wanted it to look like it's getting smaller and smaller as it goes away so all I need to do here is kind of start disconnecting it. I would say maybe right in this vicinity. And then I want it to kind of have a full arcing motion to come in through here. So I'm gonna keep it pretty close up there and then I'll start kind of arcing it in through here and bring it right down to my marker. And then you can do any adjusting that you need to or want to. And we will be using our large brush for the next step. So you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the sky and our back mountains. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue, white, green, and brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my sky first with blue and white, and then I will do my um, back mountain so it looks like it's really far off in the distance and we're just gonna give it a nice soft finish to it. So I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of blue and white on my brush at the same time. So I have both colors on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna start at the top of my sky with both of these colors and then as I move down towards my mountain range, I'm just gonna pick up white paint. So I'm starting with both blue and white and I'm just kind of applying it in a circular type of brush stroke and I didn't have much paint on my brush at all because I, I've just got this little area that I'm working on and now I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit of white paint to finish off that sky with my dirty brush. I'm bringing it all the way down to my pencil mark so that way it will um, make sure that I have the entire canvas painted. And again, I don't have much paint on my brush. I'm just kind of rubbing it in so I have a nice soft type of appearance to that sky, a little bit darker at the bottom or a little bit darker at the top than it is at the bottom. So now I'm going to start tackling my um, hill in through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a soft kind of smoky blue type of color that I'll be using for the base, for the uh, dominant color in that um, in in that uh, hills. So I'm gonna use some of my blue. I'm also gonna use brown and a touch of white. And I'm just gonna mix it together. So what this is doing is this is giving me a nice out of focus soft color that I can utilize as the base color for these hills. And then what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna kind of swirl it around on the hills, and then I'll start introducing some green and brown and maybe a little additional white as well. So I've got my custom blue on here. I'm gonna just kind of give myself some good areas with this blue, so that way it'll look like we've got some, maybe some nice hills and maybe some, some areas that kind of poke out a little bit more or have a little bit more height or volume to them. And again, I'm just kind of using a circular type of brush stroke, not much paint on my brush. And now that I've got this on here and I've left some, some areas that might not have as much paint on them, once I've got this on here, I'm gonna start introducing a little bit of maybe brown and green and white. A little tiny dot 
all together on my brush, on my dirty brush. So I still have my blue on there as well. And now I'm just gonna start intermingling these other natural colors that are gonna give us a little bit of information or dimension throughout these hills without putting too much detail to it. So I'm gonna just switch back and forth on my dirty brush with these four colors at this point, my soft blue, my brown, my green. You could use a dotting type of technique that might give it a little bit too much texture and put it a little bit too much in focus, but I'm just using a softer brush stroke. So again, I just reloaded my brush with the green, white, and brown on my dirty brush. So some areas might end up a little bit lighter, some might end up a little bit browner. So that's gonna help to provide little information about peaks and valleys within these hills. And these hills are not intended to look like any specific hills that I am familiar <laughs> with. They are just intended to be something nice and out of focus that can act as a nice backdrop to our um, to our scenery that we're creating. And then I just keep adding this on here, maybe a little bit more of my custom blue up at the top here so I can make sure that all of my pencil is gone. And then I would just keep fiddling with it until I feel like I've got some good information without making it too light or too dark or too much information. We're gonna have trees uh, in focus trees in front of this so you don't have to worry about it going fine-tuned detail on you but if you want um, to just kind of keep fiddling with it I would step away from it see if there's any little um, more information I want you could even if you wanted to put like the little top of a hill I just picked up a tiny bit more white on my brush you could even kind of enhance the the appearance of the little edges of the hills by just putting a little bit of white on them and that'll give you a little bit more kind of information again without making it go too in focus. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint our road and we're going to do the base coat for our grassy areas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are that smoky, dusty blue that we created, our mountain blue that we had, brown, black, white, and green. I'm gonna tackle my road first. I want it to be pretty darn light up in through here, and because that's farther away from us, that's where I'll use some of my uh, mountain blue in it so it gives it the illusion that it's farther away and then when it comes closer to us I'll be using more browns and blacks so that way it'll look like it's more in focus we'll put a little bit of darkness by the sides where it's going to meet our grass and then our grassy areas we're just going to use brown green and white to do a base coat so I'm going to start with my mountain blue plus white on my brush at the same time and you, again, you don't need a lot, so just a little bit on the brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna be putting it up in this area in through here. As I'm doing my road, I'm gonna be using my brush in a, the direction of where I um, the road goes. So I'm gonna be kind of pulling all of my streaks kind of in, in this direction so it'll give the illusion of the, um, the path that the road is taking. So now that I've got that lighter color up top and through here, maybe a little bit more white just to make it look like it's really kind of far away from us and maybe lit up by some sunshine. We'll be able to do more details around these edges later, but that's looking pretty good. And then as I come down in through here, I'm going to be using a combination of black, brown, and white, and I'm going to use them all at the same time. So I've got black, brown, and white on my brush at the same time, about equal parts, and I'm going to just kind of start adding this darkness to my road. I'm doing it a little bit darker over on the side so that's going to make it look like it's uh, almost shadowy underneath that grass and then I'm going to start bringing a little bit more white into it. So again black, brown, and white but you can increase the quantity of white. You can decrease the quantity of white. It doesn't always have to be um, exactly in this motion. If you want it to look more like a dirt road as opposed to a paved road, you could certainly give the um, 
give the the surface texture of the of the ground a little bit more of a speckly kind of look like you could dot your brush or you could even do it kind of in a more messy fashion left to right but I think I'm going to go for more of a paved look to my road so again I'm using black brown and white and just kind of I'm using quite a bit of paint right now just so I can get a good amount on there and I can spread it out so it'll blend pretty well for me I don't want it to go too, too dark because I know that I'm going to want a shadow underneath my car. So I want it to have some darkness to it, especially down at this bottom, but I don't necessarily need it to go all the way dark. So again, just kind of getting it on here, making sure I've got a good amount of paint down in through here so I can just kind of blend it up. And I'm not looking for it to be perfect because I know one, I've got a big, huge car that's going to take up the majority of this area. So I'm really just looking to give myself some nice natural tones to the pavement. So it's a believable type of, um, you know, look that surrounds the car and surrounds the, the landscape that we're putting in. So again, no need to be perfect, just kind of allowing myself these neutral, natural tones, bringing it all the way up in through here. I think I might re put a little bit more lightness back up in that top area just to make sure that it all blends well. And then once I've got this on here, I just kind of manipulate it or kind of work it a little bit more. So again, it blends pretty well, but I, you can see all of the tonal kind of shifts and value changes as I, because I used all three of those colors at the same time, it allows for that nice kind of um, interesting light spots and dark spots as we're going through it. I'm gonna add a touch more paint up in through here. I just picked up a little bit more white just so I could make sure that I have that road as light as I want it up in through there. And I might, you know, as the process continues, I might, you know, continue to fiddle with it, but that's looking pretty good right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna do my grassy areas. So I'm gonna start with just brown paint on my brush initially down at the bottom of the grass. Then I'm gonna to go to brown and green, then green, then green and white. I'm gonna be using a dotting, stippling type of technique. I'm gonna bring it right to the road so right to the road, even if you bump into the road, that's fabulous. That's going to just make it look a little bit more natural. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. So just brown is on my brush right now. You can even, over, like I said, overlap it into, that, um, into the road a little bit. So now that I've got my brown on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up green without washing my brush and overlap these two sections. So that way they work together and it's gonna make it look like there's a transition from light to dark, from the top of the hills down to the bottom. This is just the base coat for the grass. We're gonna be adding a lot more detail to it later. So again, if this does not start out perfect for you, don't worry because we've got lots and lots to go on it. <laughs> we've got a beautiful second step that's gonna come through and add a lot of detail. And to avoid this looking like separate line sections in your grass. The trick is to just oh, make sure that you're overlapping those colors. You can dot them into one another. I'm just using them in a progressive way so that way, um, be it dark to light, so that way they appear to get lighter as it goes to the top. I'm picking up more green right now to get it to go towards that tippy tippy top. And because I didn't wash my brush, the brown is working its way off of my brush, which is allowing for this green without me to even use white, it's allowing this green to look lighter and lighter as I'm going towards that top. I'll start picking up white in a minute, but right now I just wanna get this um, transition nice and smooth and not too dramatic from one color to the next. So here we go, I've got this pretty well covered. So now I'm gonna pick up without washing my brush a touch of white paint. So I have white and a little bit of green on my brush right now. And this is gonna get that grass to go nice and soft and light up at the top, almost like a little bit of a minty kind of a color. And we'll, like I said, we've got lots of details and stuff to go, but this is just gonna start that process to um, having that grass 
progressively getting lighter as it goes towards the top. Picking up just a little bit more white paint to get this tippy top of this hill in through here. And then again, just making sure it blends in with the neighboring green. And then we're gonna be using our, let's see, we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our distant trees. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, have a couple of trees over in here where you'll be seeing the tree trunks as well as the tops to the trees. And then I'll have some farther ones that maybe are over the hill where we're just gonna see the tree tops to them. So I'm gonna start with some black and brown to give myself these tree trunks. And then I'm gonna put a dark base for all of the leaves on the trees and then we'll build our way to some lighter leaves on the exterior. So I'm gonna start with black and brown on my brush at the, oops, and some of my little blue too. Black and brown on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna put some tree trunks in through here. So I think I'm gonna, if this is like the edge of my canvas, I'm maybe about, I don't know, five or six inches over to the, uh, over from the edge. And I know that I'm just gonna have the, see a little bit of the bottoms of the tree. So I don't need to do much here. I'm really just looking to give the illusion of some tree trunks that are making their way up into the um, tree itself. So again, just black and brown. I'm, I'm actually alternating those colors just so I can give myself a nice kind of solid base. And maybe we've got a couple of little branches sticking out, uh, nothing major. I'm gonna do the same thing, come over here, maybe about another inch and a half or so, and maybe this one just has a little split and maybe a little wider at the bottom, and maybe we just kind of split this up in through here. They don't have to be the same. You can certainly make them different. Then what I'm gonna do with the, I'm gonna put green and black and brown on my brush at the same time. So green, black, and brown, and I'm gonna dot where I want my leaves to go. So I'm just green, black, and brown. And I'm just giving myself this really um, simple way to start the tree with these darker colors. This is gonna allow us to add a lot of dimension into the tree. I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot right now. I just kind of um, alternating between the green, black, and brown. You can have them all on your brush at the same time. The green is gonna really help to pop out some of those, um, some of the softness to it. That's that one. I'm gonna go ahead and tackle the other one. And again, I'm just dotting at this point. Using these um, round brushes will allow you to have these little almost speckly kind of edges to it. So that way you can get the, the realistic kind of edge to it. I'm gonna have these, tr these two trees overlapping one another. You can have them really tall. You can have them short. Whatever is visually appealing to you is it's your tree, you get to make it however you want. And I'm trying not to cover up all the my trunk down at the bottom. And I do like my trees to be somewhat asymmetrical. So if, um, you know, one side is a little bit bigger than the other, that's okay, just as long as it, it looks like that trunk can support it. <laughs> or if you need to add another branch, feel free to do so. And then I'm gonna go ahead, while I'm working with this darkness on my brush, I'm gonna go over and do the other one. So green, brown, and black is where I'm starting. Over and through here, I'm just gonna make a kind of a series of, I, I call them bushes, but to me, they're the, the top side of some trees on the other side of the hill. So I've got those three colors on my brush. I'm gonna kind of just uh, tap it along the roadside, the grass, as far as I want it to go in through there. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna just kind of come up and give myself kind of like a little silhouette of what I want the, the tops to look like. And again, I've just got the green, brown, and black on my brush. And if it's all black on you and it feels a little overwhelming with the black, then certainly don't pick up black the next time. Like I just picked up green and brown, but I still had black on my brush. So that's going to allow you to have some light spots and some dark spots, which will make it look nice and natural. And I'm going right up to my roadside. So this way it looks like 
you know, it's, you know, the road is got maybe some little bumps or something along it. And it, again, just adds to the, the textural element and the, the organic type of, of shapes that these trees can certainly have. And of course, I, I'm making this one a little bit bigger than that one. And you could certainly alter the sizes on yours, just dotting this in through here. And then once I've got my shapes in there, now I'm gonna just start adding some lightness to them. So I want to have a little bit of a lighter green color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use green. Well, let me wash and dry my brush first so I can get that black paint off. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm gonna use green and yellow. This will give me a nice lighter kind of version of green. You can even add a touch of white into it. So what this is doing is just giving you a lighter value than your um, green oxide with a little bit of the yellow in it is gonna keep some nice sunshine. So once I've done that, now what I can do is I can use that as a lighter version within my tree. I don't wanna dot the whole thing, I'm just kind of sporadically giving myself some some places where I want this lightness to appear. I may even come back in with the green oxide and I'm also gonna come in with a little bit more sunshine on the top of these trees as well. But this is just my, my start to adding the detail to them. And again, not going all the way, just kind of giving, especially at the tops of them, a little bit more information. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of white on my dirty brush. So now I'm gonna just start adding these little additional pockets of brightness. I'm gonna pick up uh, maybe a little bit of yellow too, just to, yeah, there we go. Just give myself that bit more sunshine. I picked up a little bit of yellow with that white. And you, you know, yours could be much brighter or darker than mine. This, these are intended to look like spring trees. So to me, spring trees seem to be a little bit more on the yellow side and have, you know, sometimes they'll have their little pink flowers in them, which we're gonna put on later. <laughs> but right now, again, just kind of getting this on here. And if you feel that you, you know, it's too bright, you can always go back into your green oxide and brown, which is what I just did in order to get some of it to just kind of blend in a little bit better in those darker areas. So that, you know, you just keep dotting until you feel like you've got that great dimension to it. And then once you feel that you've got this all night, I just picked up a little bit more white to get these little tippy tops over in through here. Once you feel that you've got this accomplished, we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So you can put this uh, medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our grass. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are yellow, green, and white. And you might find that you wanna go into a little bit of brown too if you feel the need to do so, feel free to do so. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting um, a second layer on my grass so I can finalize the texture to it and so it'll look nice and finished. So I want this grass to look like it's longer as it comes towards the viewer or towards the bottom of the land area. So I'm gonna be using the corner of my bristle brush and kind of pulling up longer pieces of grass. And then as I go farther away, I'll be dotting. So this way, the grass as it goes farther away is gonna look shorter and the grass as it's closer is gonna look longer. I never have a lot of paint on my brush and as when I'm doing the longer pieces of grass, I will only be using the corner of my brush and I just kind of flick it up like this and I give it in these little kind of curves. And then as I go up, I will start, instead of flicking, I'll start dotting it with the, um, with the edge of my brush. So I want this to look pretty, pretty natural. So you can use some of that light green, you can use yellow, you can use green oxide, white, whatever combination is gonna work for you. I have the, uh, the base coat underneath here darker than the top, so you'll be able to see these longer pieces of grass that will look a little bit more in focus. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my yellow, that light green, and maybe a touch of white all on my brush at the same time in a very small amount. And now that I've got those on my brush, now I can start just at the edge of my grass, I can just start picking, pick, like pulling up these longer 
pieces. And because I'm using such a uh, high contrast, contrasting color, you can see that it makes it look more realistic and that you can see the detail to it better than you'll be able to see it up top because it's got that darkness underneath. So again, just kind of picking up my yellow, light green, and white are my colors that I'm using here. And again, just kind of flicking my brush up using the corner. I'm not pressing hard either. Um, if I press too hard, it's gonna be a softer type of brush stroke. And as I come up, I'm almost kind of just jabbing at the canvas. You can even see the canvas bouncing as I'm doing this. So that's just allowing me to have these little shorter pieces as it's going farther away and these longer pieces down here. And I just kind of keep going at it until I feel that I have enough of the, the long stuff that you can see, especially right along this edge. And again, that's what's gonna make it look a little bit more realistic if you can have these longer, seemingly longer pieces right here at the edge with that darkness underneath because you'll that'll make it look more in focus. And then as I work my way away from it, I'm gonna start just kind of tapping with the edge of my brush. And this what this is gonna do, it'll give you those little speckly, um, kind of twinkly pieces on the top of the of the grass and just going away if you feel that you when when you're going up towards the top if you need any more of the green or the yellow feel free to put that in but right now just kind of really just tapping a kind of another layer onto this upper grass so it looks like it's a you know a ton of just little dots of grass like we're just seeing the edges to them and then even at the top top you don't necessarily even have to dot it. You can just kind of rub it because this uh, the top part would be really out of focus and you would just see the softness to the, to the colors to the grass. So you can certainly play with that as much as you want. I'm gonna go do the same thing over here. So light green, yellow, and a touch of white are my colors on my brush. And again, gonna use the corner of my brush. And because I use the colors at the same time on my brush, I'm going to get spots that are lighter or darker. Some are going to have more green in them. Some are going to have more yellow in them. So th again, that just allows it to look more natural than if you were to just use one solid color. And then as I work my way up, I'm, I'm doing more of just a dotting type of technique. And then as I get up into here, just kind of lots of tiny little dots, maybe a little bit of longer stuff in through here, right around this little edge in through here and I'm just thinking you know the closer it is to the viewer the longer and more in focus it would appear to be um, we'd see the detail to it more so that's why on these pieces in through here I'm trying to get that little bit of a detail and if you're going through this and you've lost that darkness from behind it you can always repeat the step you can always go back and put a little bit you know let it dry, put the brown back on, and then start over. You can always practice a step more than once. You don't, if you don't get it on the first shot, that's okay. Just try again. There's no, you know, no saying that you can't, that you can't repeat that step. And again, just kind of dotting it as I go up towards the top. And then if I have any additional um, places that I want, like maybe feel like I want a couple more pieces, <laughs> a couple more longer pieces in through here. So I just, kind of reloaded my brush with a little bit more white um, so that way I could get those evident pieces of grass. And if you needed to also, this would be the time if you felt that like around your um, road edge needed any finesse and you could certainly um, fiddle with that as much as you want as well. And then we're gonna be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got your grass done, you can put your mini or your large brush away take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our car. I'm gonna be using my chalk because the chalk is easier to see on top of this background than the pencil was, which is why I chose to use two different drawing utensils today. So I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers and then by the time we're done, we'll have a nice basic shape that we can use during the coloring in process in painting. Um, we're not going to go for any fine-tuned detail here, just some nice basic shapes that'll allow us to 
that'll guide us through the whole process. So we're going to start with a rectangle. If you find yourself the center of your canvas, left to right, top to bottom, mine is about here. I'm going to go about a quarter of the way over to the left or about five inches over to the left at that same height. That's going to be my first marker. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the right hand side. So about five inches or so over to this right hand side will be my second marker. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down directly from these two until I'm about two, in, two to two and a half inches away from the bottom of my canvas. I'll do the same thing over on this side. You do want to make sure that you're kind of equal distance away from the bottom of your canvas for here and then here as well. So you could use um, a any kind of measuring tool like a brush or anything like that just to make sure that you're equal distance away from the bottom of the canvas that way your car will be straight <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect these markers so this um, the lines that you're connecting the markers with at this point don't have to be perfect um, they're just giving providing us with a nice guide to work from so if they're wobbly and not straight that's okay so now that we've got that rectangle, I'm going to come over to the left hand side about halfway up this line and I'm going to give myself a, circ a circle shape that is about an inch and a quarter wide by an inch and a quarter tall. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. So about halfway up that line and you know, I might give or take, I might be a little higher or lower on one side, but that's all right. Maybe the car's a little tipped. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect here to uh, a little to the left of the center of this circle. So if I go a little to the left of the center of the circle, right about here, I'm gonna connect this corner to here with an arcing type of a line. And again, here's my center. Gonna go a little bit to the right of that right in through here and then connect here to up and through here with an arcing line. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to section off a little piece. So these are the tail lights and then there's another piece to the tail light above it. So I'm just going to take this from about halfway up this line and give myself a little arcing line like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So about halfway up this line, if I can get my hand out of the way going to give myself a little arcing line like that. So what we've done is we've separated out this little light and the and the tail light in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to from this corner here, I'm going to come out about the same distance that I have here. So you could in essence kind of come straight down from here, just continue this line past this light and you're going to come down about the same distance from here. So that's that. And then I bump out a little edge for a bumper right in through there. So I'm going to do the same thing from here. I'm going to come straight down past this light right in through here. I'm going to come down to about the same distance as this marker. Pull it over and then give myself a little kind of bump out for the bumper. I'm going to give myself two tires. So I'm going to come straight down from here, up almost halfway between here and the bottom of my canvas. So something like that. I'm going to come over to the left about an inch and then I'll connect the bottom like that. Do the same thing here. Come straight down from here about halfway between there and the bottom. Go over to the right about an inch and then just connect the bottom. So we've got two tires. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the, um, the outline for the windshield. So I'm going to come up from here about two and a half to three inches. So this is going to be somewhere in this vicinity is going to be the top of the windshield. I'm going to come in from here, I would say about an inch or so, something like that. And then in from here about an inch. I'm going to connect these with kind of an oval. It's going to be really flat at the top and then it'll curve around on each side. So I'm going to take this over to the left. I'm going to start curving it right before it gets to that uh, to the that distance outside. So something like that, and again take it over here and curve it like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself what'll be the back of the. This is going to be a convertible. So the soft top of the convertible is kind of bunched up down and through here. 
So I'm going to come up here, maybe about, oh, I would say, half of an inch to three quarters of an inch, and give myself a little bit of a bumpy kind of edge. I'll do the same thing over in through here, a little bit of a bumpy kind of edge. And then I'm going to connect these with just, I don't need it to be super straight. I actually kind of want it to have a little bit of movement in it. So I'm just going to kind of give myself this organic kind of line in through there. Then I'm going to do my um, my people's heads as well. So we have something to start in through there. So I'm just going to give myself, this is going to be the steering wheel. I'm going to give my um, guy's head is going to come right here with just an oval type of a shape. And then my woman's head, she's going to have her neck is going to be sideways, like she's leaning into her new husband. And then I'm going to have two circles, one for her head and one for her fancy bun on the top of her head. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. You certainly can do any tweaking that you want. We're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint in the base coat for our car and our couple. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And what I'm going to do is, in essence, do quite a few of these areas are going to have a base coat of black. I'll do brown for my people, and then my car is going to get a nice antique kind of creamy color for it. So I'm going to start with my people. I'm just going to be using brown paint as my base coat. So as I go towards the edges of my chalk, you can, if you want to, reshape it a little bit just to give it a little bit more of an organic kind of shape. You can bump out that hair a little bit. Um, you know, if you feel you want to put an ear or something, feel free to do so or customize it to whatever shape the people are that you might be representing. Um, if you want to do a different color hair, feel free to do so. I'm just using a nice kind of generic brown as my, as my base color. For her, just going to do the same thing. They're going to have similar color hair. You might, you know, want one to be a little bit lighter or darker, but you can certainly most times just use a, a similar color for the base coat and then just add the, um, you know, the more customized color on top of it. So that's going to be good for that. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush so I can get my black areas to have their details. So just wash and dry my brush. So as I go through this process, if I am coming about a line or something that I'm not um, sold on where my, my chalk mark is, you can always leave a bit of your chalk mark visible and then you can erase it after it dries. So what I'm going to do here, and you, if you want to use a smaller brush too during um, these little areas, you can certainly do that as well. I'm just bringing down my um, my steering wheel with a little bit of black. You can also put a touch of water on your brush as you're doing these finer lines so that way your, your brush has a little bit more fluidity in it um, and you can carry those lines farther. So just kind of going right along my chalk mark and slowing down a little bit so I can just get my nice natural curve there. I've got a little bit of water on my brush with the black paint and I'm just using the tip of my brush. I'm bracing myself on the canvas so my hand doesn't shake too bad because I definitely have a shaky hand. So that helps me to keep myself a little bit, brace myself and be a little bit more sturdy when it comes to these um, smaller lines. And if you make your line a little wonky or a little bigger than you, than you wanted, wanted, we can always disguise it with a little bit of highlight or anything along that line. This whole back section in through here is going to get black paint. So you'll notice as I go through this painting in process, there are a couple of lines that we created during the, um, during the outlining process that were just guides. So we had a little chalk mark in through there that I'm just painting over. That was just helped us get our structure where we needed it. And then again, this is just a piece of um, cloth or, or, you know, a nice natural piece of um, the car. So if there's lumps and bumps in it, I'm intentionally doing that. So it looks a little bit more natural, like it's, you know, all kind of bunched up at the top of the car. So that's that. I'm going to now do 
my lights, I'm gonna do them with a base coat of black also. So just making sure that I have, um, I'm trying to get a similar shape from one side of the car to the next, but again, if I distort it or make it something that I wasn't expecting to, I can always correct that with when I go in for the details um, or, you know, I can correct it with, you know, slowing down a little bit or making little adjustments. I like to, once I do it, if after it dries, I'll, if I have to come in and do any corrections, I may do that. But I know that during the painting process, there's so many steps to, to um, completing this that there's so many opportunities to come back and, you know, work, work around little edges that you might not have gotten perfect. So I, I just know that all that process comes um, through time. So I don't, I don't sweat it if during this, you know, initial process, if I screw up or if I, you know, make a line outside of where I had intended, I can always correct it later. I'm going to do my tires with the black paint as well. So my tires, as they get down to the bottom, um, to the road surface, I'm going to give the edges, the bottom left and the bottom right edge to my tire, a little bit of a curve. So um, it looks like they kind of come in a little bit. So I'm going straight down. And then as I get to the bottom, I'm just going to curve in that, that corner a little bit so they don't look too square at the bottom. Not totally necessary, but if you want to add that little bit additional illusion, and again, I'll just erase the corners with, of that chalk with um, with a little bit of water once I've got, uh, once the paint dries. And then once I've got this, the tire done, we're going to make a custom color for the car itself. So you, when, when you're going through this process, if you decide that you want a pink car or a blue car, you can certainly customize it to whatever you want. I'm just going for a kind of a vintage antique cream kind of color for my car, but you could certainly um, do yours in whatever color that you'd like. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna create a custom, we'll call it tan, and I've already created it so you can see where I'm headed, but I'll show you how to get there. So this is the color I'm going for. I used mostly white and brown, but I also, let me get a little bit more brown here. I also used a touch of black. So this way the black helps to kind of neutralize it a little bit and make it, um, it, it could even almost represent like a light gray type of color, but I didn't want it to go too tan on me. So that's why I used a little bit of the black to help um, neutralize it a little bit. So this is the color I'm going for. And I know that it will get a little bit darker as it dries, especially since we have this dark base coat underneath it. And then I'm just going to color in the rest of the vehicle with this base, this tan type of a color. We'll put all of the details on later. This is just going to provide us with a great place to start during this process and to kind of tie together all the colors in, in the back end of the car. So I'm not doing any special brush stroke. I am just kind of slowing down when I get around the details. I am going to carry this color around the left side of the top light. So I'm going to take um, this color and just kind of trying to get my hand out of the way here. Just pull it right around almost like a little outline on the outside of that light and through there, that's going to show that the 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 framework or the um, casing of the car is wrapping around that little light and through there. And then I'm just going to um, paint the rest of this. So this car is just representing a uh, nice antique vehicle. I kind of took bits and pieces from different cars and melded it into the one that I wanted. I don't think the back end of this car um, specific car actually has convertibles, but we made it into a convertible for this painting. <laughs> so if you find a car that you want to add different kind of details to it, feel free to do so. This is just intended to be a fun representational uh, image. So if you want to incorporate uh, any, you know, you could have a little fun 
Volkswagen, Beetle car. I know that they're, they are, um, have nicknames as being the love bugs, so that'd be a cute car to use uh, as one of these as one of these uh, paintings. So you certainly you can customize this. Or maybe you have a special car that you drove off in after your wedding that you want to, you know, modify this to be that. So just have fun with it. Make it your own if you want to. You can change the, the couple in the car. You can change the scenery. Maybe they're going to the beach or they're going to the woods or, you know, maybe they're going somewhere that you've been to so just you know this is one of those paintings you get to customize into whatever is special to you or use it as is and you know put a date on the sign when we go to do the sign you can you know maybe there's a special couple that you know that is getting married and this would be a fun kind of commemorative thing to present to them or even a nice card or something so again on this side i'm going to bring this color over the um on the outside of that little light and through there again just so it looks like the casing to the car which i'm sure is not the right word the body of the car <laughs> is um surrounding that light and then just bringing this all the way and then once you've got this done let's see what are we going to do for the next step we're going to be using this same brush for the next step so i'm just finishing up in here you might want to do a second coat on this if you find that your paint is a little streaky and you want to have a nice solid coat you can certainly do a second coat on this area before you go on to the next step so that'll be your call i might do a second coat on mine but once you've got that done you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint highlights and shadows on the back end of the car. So this is gonna be like where the trunk is, um, up in through here to make those parts of the car pop out. And we'll put all the details on later with the sign and the details of the lights and stuff like that, but I wanna give the back end of the vehicle some shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, do a little bit of an outline with my, I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'll be using black, brown, my um, cream color, the tan that we made for the car, and white. And I'm going to be doing these little outlines that of shadows <laughs> that will um, kind of take that bumper or the, um, the trunk of the car, tell you where the trunk of the car is, and then we'll outline where the bumper is, and then we'll do highlights and shadows. So it'll make it look realistic by the time we're done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a teeny tiny bit of black paint on my brush and then I'm gonna put some water on my brush. So what I do is I just kind of dip it in my um, water and then tap it off on my paper towel. So that way I have a lot of moisture in the bristles of my brush and I can get like a, no a nice long fluid line. All I'm looking to do is kind of follow the contour of this, the edge of the car, but about an inch in. So. I'll do the same thing on here, about an inch in, and I'm gonna stop just about at the bottom, maybe a little bit lower at the bottom of the lights. So I'm gonna take it from here, and I'm just gonna do a real slender line, bringing it in through here. And you could certainly use your pencil to draw this out first. Wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine. And if one side of the car is, is not exactly the same as the other, that's okay. You can you can say that the car is at a little bit slightly different of an angle. And then I'm just gonna kind of take this and go across this bottom, connecting those two or close enough to it, something like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing right where that bumper is gonna go. So I'm gonna have my bumper in through here and then just kind of bring it straight across to my other little marker. And again, if it's not totally straight, that's fine. So now that I have that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, wash my brush and I'm gonna pick up some of my tan plus a tiny bit of brown and black. So I pick up and I, I just need just a teeny tiny bit on my brush. So a little bit of my tan, a tiny bit of brown and a tiny bit of black. So just like dot it on the end of your brush. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow underneath the lights and in this little kind of dip in the car in through here. So I've got that combination of a 
little bit darker of a color and you could certainly pre-mix yourself a little bit of a color that's going to make this um, shadowy area but I'm just kind of going very subtle so I don't need much at all and again just a little bit of brown a touch of black one side might be a little bit more than the other one side might be a little less than the other whatever works for you just something a little bit darker than um, than this top part and again you can get it to blend in with your um, with your tan color and again I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot just getting it to go a little bit darker in these um, in these two little sections in through here and then I'm going to do the same thing underneath that light so I'm going to go a little bit darker here um, so a little bit more black and brown and just kind of giving myself a little shadow underneath that that the housing of the light so something like that and again if you go too too dark you can just pick up a little bit of your um, cream color to to work that out and that's all I'm really going to do for the shadows on it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start adding my highlights so my highlight is really just contour highlights I want a big one right in through here to show that the edge of the trunk kind of bumps out and I also want them up on the top of these um, areas in through here just to show that they are rounded um, the whole top of the hood is going to be lighter than the back so I'm going to have a lot of highlight up in through the whole top of it but I'll have my brightest highlight in through here I'm going to try not to go all the way white so when I do this I'm going to be using my tan plus white on my brush because when I go to do my sign later I want my sign to be white so I want it to pop out a little bit so I'm picking up white plus a little bit of my tan color and I'm going to go straight across this back end in through here so just kind of fluidly go all the way across and then I can kind of blend it down into um, the trunk air the, the back side of the car like this and it's not going to be a perfect blend right off the bat I will get it to to blend in a little bit better now I'm taking that paint and I'm blending it up so I, I, I will most likely end up going over this probably two times two maybe even three times to get the blend the way that I want but just starting it in this uh, way will help this area get lighter so again just tan plus my white is gonna allow me to get this lighter area up at the back I'm not concerned about this being a perfect line either because I'm gonna have the cloth from the um, from the convertible roof will be showing there so that will work for me and just getting this to blend in a little bit more I'm gonna pick up now that this is blended pretty well I'm gonna pick up my tan in order to get this bottom part to blend in a little bit better I know I still have some remnants of the white on my brush so that will help me as well so now that I've got that in there I'm gonna elevate this just a little bit more get it to blend just a little bit more for my eye to to be happy so again you might find that a different brush works out better for you or making um, using a little bit of an extender in your paint so a liquid medium or they have extenders that will keep your paint a wet a little bit longer um, and that will help the blending process so I'm picking up that combination again but I have hardly any paint on my brush just a teeny tiny bit on the tip of my brush I'm going to do these two areas right in through here so I'm going to take this right over the edge in through here so it's mostly white at this point I just have a little bit of that tan on my brush but again having that tan on my brush is going to ensure that I don't make it go too white and it'll just provide me with that little bit of a contrast from the top to the bottom to make it look like it's got a nice contour to it again going to do the same thing over on this side so white with a touch of the tan on my brush and again if you wanted a little bit smaller of a brush or a little bit um, more fluid of paint feel free to adjust it to whatever you need I'm picking up a little bit more white I feel like I want a little bit more white at the um, at this little top in through here so just a touch more white there we go that's gonna make me happy <laughs> sometimes it's just it's just those little tiny tiny bits that will help to 
make your painterly eye happy. I'm going in for a little bit lighter of a color over here too. And I'm not concerned if these two areas go a little bit whiter because they're going to be set apart from the um, the sign, but this area in through here, I didn't want to go too, too light. Then what I'm going to do, I want a tiny bit of a highlight on the edges of the car in through here to make it look like it's got a little bit of a rounded edge. So again, I'm just picking up a little bit of white plus my tan. I'm going to bring this down on these edges in through here like this. And then I just kind of, I'm going to blend it to the left on this one. So I've got it there and then I just blend it towards the left until it just kind of disappears into the tan color. And this is going to show, give a little bit of a contour on the edge of the car. So just a tiny bit of white plus my tan on my brush. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just put it right on this edge like this, right along that edge, and then blend it in towards the tan or in towards the, the back of the car until it just fades into it and they blend nicely. And then if you have remnants on your brush, you can certainly take a little bit of a highlight black or a tan plus a touch of white. You can put a little bit down above that bumper. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go crazy with it, just maybe to add a little bit of shape to that particular piece as if it bumps out just a little bit, but I just caution you that you don't you don't need to do too much. Just a tiny bit will will make a, a, a good difference. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the details on the front end of the vehicle. So I'm considering the front end to be the um, the canvas part of the convertible top, the windshield, the steering wheel. We're going to put a little rear view mirror in and we're going to consider our people in the front end of the car too. So we'll just, we're going to do their hair, her um, veil and her decorative head piece will come on later. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to add a highlight onto the glass for the windshield. So what I, I'm using my small brush during this process, I'll be using primarily, well, I'll be using white, black, um, yellow, and maybe a little red, but I'll call them out as I'm gonna use them. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna, again, add a highlight or a, a shine or a glaze to the glass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a tiny bit of white paint on my brush and I'm gonna dip it in my water just like I did for that black stuff. So I just dip my brush in my water so it's almost like dripping and then I just tap it off on my paper towel. Again, what this does is puts lots of moisture in my bristles so I can carry this a far way. I'm going to be um, kind of underlining this black rail right here and then I'm gonna blend the white till it becomes very see-through um, coming down the windshield. So I have my watered down white on my brush and the more liquid in your paint, the better at this, at this part. You can always um, add more paint, but it'll be tough to take it away if you have too much on there. So I'm putting my line up here and just make sure I've got it as far across as I want. And you can add more water to your brush if you want to. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna blend it down into that windshield. I think I need a little bit more paint on my brush right now. And again, a little bit of white and water, and then just blend it down. It will look whiter when it's wet because of the liquid within. If, you've used, if you're using water, the um, water, water will cause like a fogginess to it when it's wet, but when it dries, it will, um, it will take on more of the color that's that it's be that's behind it. So just don't be too alarmed if it's too wet or too white right off the bat. You can bump into your heads if you need to because we're going to be painting over those in a minute, but I just want it a little bit brighter at the top and then just fading down and into the glass. So that's about as far as I'm going to go on mine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more white to my brush and I'm gonna put a highlight on the outside 
of this um, black rail. So this is not, I don't have much water on my brush right now. I'm just gonna add this highlight around um, the edge of this so it almost looks like it's um, reflecting whatever the sunshine is or it's got a little chrome or whatever you imagine it to be. So just a little white outline and it doesn't even have to be perfect because the uh, if it's a shiny object it could be reflecting other stuff so you could have a little blue in there you could have a little um, you know green to be reflecting the grass or whatever and if you don't want to bring it out as far as your chalk mark like I think that that chalk mark right there was a little too far so I can erase my chalk mark later if I need to. So I'm also gonna put this little bit of a highlight on top of my steering wheel. So I just have white paint on my brush and I'm just gonna give it a little outline at the top of it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a little rear view mirror. So I'm just doing this with black paint to start. So again, if I want my fine lines, I use a little bit of water on my brush. And I'm just gonna go for trying to find the center of my windshield. I'm just gonna do a little rectangle, maybe about a half of an inch away from the edge of my, um, of the top of my window. And I'm maybe, I don't know, an inch wide. Just a little tiny rectangle in here, nothing, nothing too fancy. You can make yours as, um, you know, detailed as you want. You could put stuff hanging from your, from your um, rear view mirror if you want. Once I've got my shape on there, I'm just gonna do a little um, attachment piece. So just a little tiny um, mark at the top, maybe a little bit at a diagonal. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of white paint and give myself a little couple of little highlights, maybe just around the edges Again, you can make yours into whatever whatever kind of windshield you'd or a little rear view mirror that you would like. So something like that. And then once I've got that on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, and you could even put stuff reflecting in there like the sky or something, but what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do this cloth in through here. So I'm just going to put a bunch of black and white on my brush at the same time. So I've got a high quantity of paint on my brush and I'm just going to do these little kind of gray sporadic streaks in this. So uh, over on the edges, I am kind of bringing it, uh, giving it a little bit of a, a curve type of look to it around these edges. So it looks like it's kind of buckling and then maybe a little bit of an extra highlight on the top of it, like it's catching a little bit of the sunshine. But again, not doing much to that. I will, if I feel I need to clean up at the top of my um, trunk, I can certainly make that line a little bit cleaner at this time. And again, that was just black and white and a combination thereof that just at the same time will give me these great um, can, uh, cloth type of wrinkles in this area. Now I'm gonna get, put some hair on my people. So you can have your hair whatever color you want. I'm just gonna go for light brown for them. So I'm gonna give uh, put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush to give a shadow at the back side of my necks. So a tiny bit of black on my brush. This gives me, just gives me a little shadow back there. I'm gonna do the same thing on her neck, just a little, little shadow on the back side of the neck. On hers, I'm also gonna put a little shadow underneath the bun of her hair. So that way we've got um, some dimension to it. You could put some up the back, I guess, of hers. Now I'm gonna just pick a color that I wanna do for their hair. So I just want kind of a light brown color, but if I do just brown and white, I run the risk of making it look exactly like the car. So I'm gonna take a little bit of brown, yellow. I'm gonna do a touch of red and a touch of white. You can really make any kind of brown, color that you'd like. I'm just going to go for like a little bit lighter version of what I already have on there and I don't want it to be too green so the um, so the red will help to if you sometimes uh, brown and yellow will make a little bit of a greenish tone so the red helps to counteract that and kind of put a little bit of an orange tone to it. So that's looking pretty good to me. Kind of looks like a milk chocolate kind of color. So I'm just gonna use this um, with probably some white as my highlight to give myself 
um, some dimension on the hair. So I've got my lighter brown color that I'm adding on to here, giving a little bit of movement to that hair, a little bit kind of bringing it over the sides and through here for her. And now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white and just give myself the bit of a highlight showing what kind of direction the hair is going in and just kind of pulling it off to the side almost like it's just brushed nicely since they just had a formal affair that they went to hers i'm going to give a little bit of a um kind of a spin to the to my uh direction of the hair i know that this whole thing is going to be covered by her veil so i'm not terribly concerned about the details to that and then you can just fiddle with this as much as you want if you want it lighter or darker feel free to do so and then we're going to be using uh this we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put the small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the back end details, not the sign. <laughs> so the back end details I'm considering to be my lights, my bumper, my tires, and a little shadow underneath my car. And we'll do our sign and um, the cans and stuff later. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my lights. I'm going to I'm going to be using lots of colors. I'll be using red, yellow, white, uh, black, blue, maybe some green. I'm gonna use a lot of colors on this one. So I'm gonna just start by do, doing my lights. So I'm picking up some red paint on my medium brush and I'm gonna do a swirl in the middle of my lights. So I know for me that this red will take on different tonal values the more or the or the higher quantity or the lower quantity of paint. So if I have a thinner spot, when it dries, it's going to look darker than a spot that has thicker paint. So that's going to make it look luminescent. So I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. So I'm just kind of doing it in a little spiral type of way. I'm leaving a little bit on the edges of that black paint because we'll be able to um, utilize that for a little bit more detail to it. So once I've got that red on there, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put some little lights up in through here. So what I'm going to do for my lights is I'm actually going to use my hair color. So that light tannish color that we, our golden tan for the hair that we made, I'm picking up a little bit of that. I'm using that as like a base coat for the interior uh, structure of the lights. I'm just doing these kind of curved dashes along the inside of this part with this color that's a little bit darker than my car color. So something like that. I'm also going to use this as a little bit of detail around the edges of my um, lights in through here. So I'm just adding these, um, we'll, we'll call them kind of like shiny reflective marks on these lights. So just a little bit of detail in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to pick up yellow and white on my brush at the same time. So yellow and white and I'm going to put these little sparkle marks inside my lights. So yellow and white on my dirty brush. I'm putting little sparkles in through here, here, here. So it's a smaller area than I had the original tan color. You could also put a little sparkle, maybe a little bit more white on my brush here, a little sparkle inside your red. And again, doesn't have to be um, as bright as mine. I'm also putting a little sparkle on the edge of my, um, the housing of my lights. So a little bit, so this is just the yellow and white. Looks like I have a little bit more white on my brush right now, which is fine by me. It's working out. And of course you could switch and use a smaller brush if you wanted to, but sometimes I like using these bigger brushes just because it allows me to kind of be freer with my paint strokes and just allow whatever is going to happen to happen without um, going, you know, too, too invasive when it's not really necessary to. So that's looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to tackle my 
my bumper. So my bumper, I just want to look kind of like a chrome bumper so it can reflect anything in its surroundings. So I'm going to start with some blue and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm going to just do these long brush strokes going across. So blue and white. And if your uh, bumper is a little crooked like mine, you can certainly use this step as an opportunity to straighten it out. Or you just roll with it. Maybe the car is a little a little tipped, no big deal. So once I've got some blue and white on there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda shine up the um, edges. Actually, I think I want a little bit of black too. So I just put a tiny bit of black on my brush as well, just to get um, some, some darker marks in through here. And I'm trying to keep them long and um, like a continual brush stroke because the, the bumper I'm going for is uh, probably nice and clean and has, uh, straighter uh, lines to it, I would think, just because it's a piece of metal that's not dented. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep some nice long strokes to it. I want the edges to shine a lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of black. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow or a tiny bit of a dark mark right in this corner, right in through here as that bumper is wrapping around the edge of the car. I'm going to do the same thing over here. A little bit of black paint. Of course I've got a dirty brush too so if I get remnants of something else that's totally fine. And then I'm going to um, bring some real vibrant um, highlights to the edge of the bumper itself. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up some white paint and I'm going to give myself this real bright highlight over here on the left hand side and then I will pull it in towards the inside of the bumper. Similarly to how we did this little section here, only now I'm using a brighter version of the white or using you know, it in its full capacity just so I can make sure that I have it bright enough. And then I just put a little bit of water on my brush to kind of pull it in into there. I'll do the same thing on the other side. So white, and you can also, I think I need to add a little bit up here on this edge. There we go. Add this right around that little black mark. So a little bit of that white, bring it down here, and then just kind of pull it in this corner. So that'll make it look like the surrounding areas are shining into it. And then you can use as much white as you want here. I'm actually going to also pull in a little bit of green. So I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel because there's green everywhere. So you can take any colors in your surrounding and just incorporate them in that bumper. Maybe a little bit of green and yellow on my brush for over here. So I have green and yellow on my brush now. And you know, it doesn't have to be super duper bold, but if you want it to feel like it is um, reflecting the stuff around it, I just put more black too, because I think I want this to be a little bit darker in through here. And I just kind of keep tweaking it until I feel that I've got the intensity the way that I want. I've got the shine the way that I want. And again, I know that this is not gonna be the um, the focal point of the painting. So I'm aware of that. I know that my sign is gonna be more important. So I'm not terribly concerned about the detail on this. And then I wanna, um, underneath my car, I need to put a little bit of highlight on my tires. So I'm gonna pick up black plus a tiny bit of white to give myself just a little bit of a highlight on the detail of those tires. So just a little streaking down them will um, allow it to look like it's got a little bit of tread. Same thing over on this side, just a little bit. And if you go too far, you can certainly just bring back some of the black. If you feel that your stripes are a little bit too invasive, just bring back a little bit of black. You just want something really subtle. And then I just need a shadow underneath my car. So I'm going to go pretty darn dark right underneath the car and then I will fade it to um, a less intensity. So I'm going to, I'm using my medium brush. You could certainly use your large brush or a different brush, but I start with black with that water on my brush, but I don't need a ton of water. So I'm going to tap it off pretty good on my paper towel. When I do this, I'm going to get it the darkest as it's underneath the car right here and then I'm going to fade it out. I do need a little bit of dark shadow underneath my tires as well but I'll do that in a minute. So I'm going to start with it pretty 
pretty dark right in through here and I'm just kind of brushing it right up into that little crevice. I need a little bit over here too. And then once I've got it in there, we get a little bit here too, I'm gonna start rubbing it into that pavement. So that what's gonna happen is it'll be its darkest right underneath the car and then it'll fade out into the pavement. And this is one of those things, if you haven't done it before and you don't have you, you know, the, the scrubbing technique that, that I do a million times, you can certainly bring back some of your ground color, your pavement color, and that'll help to um, get it to blend in a little bit. And then I'm gonna put a tiny bit more black underneath my tires just to give them their own little bits of a, of a shadow right back in through here and maybe in through here. And if you feel like you need to blend that shadow out even more, you can, so actually, I think I want it to come down a little, I want this to be darker than that. So I just added a bit more water onto my brush. I want this to be just a little bit darker in through here. So that was just a little bit of the black plus water on my brush to, to get that to go a little darker. And then we're gonna be using, mm, we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our sign and we're gonna put any little impressionistic flowers around the canvas that we want. So I'm gonna be using red and white. You could certainly use any colors that you want. For my sign, I'm just doing a basic heart shape, but you could do a rectangle, you could do a circle, you could do any kind of shapes that you want. I'm gonna have it spreading out pretty good distance on the back of my car. So I'm gonna have it starting kind of in this direction and I'm just gonna bring it around like this and then maybe down here. And again, you could make yours whatever shape that you want. And I'm just using white to color mine in. I'll be putting um, the lettering and stuff on later, but I just wanted to have a nice, bright, bold sign. You could certainly, again, do yours whatever color you want. Once you've got the shape in there, just color it in with white. If you wanted it to look super duper realistic. You could have um, the, the color fade a little bit brighter at the top and a little bit of a darker shade down at the bottom. That would make it look like, uh, you know, it's dipped down a little bit, but I'm just going for mine is being illuminated by the beautiful sunshine that they are driving through. And it's a, just a nice bright white. It might take on some of the color underneath it too. I might actually do a second coat on it as well after it dries in order to make sure that it cuts um, through or that it, you can't see the any of the um, car details through it. So you might find that you'll, you may have to do that on your end too, is just do a second coat onto the sign if it doesn't have great coverage. So once I've got that on there, I'm gonna put some flowers all over the place. So I'm just gonna make a pink color on the fly. I'm gonna use some white paint plus a little bit of red, give myself a nice springtime pink kind of color, and I'm just gonna decide where I want some flowers to go. <laughs> so I'm gonna have some down at the bottom of my grass in through here, then maybe along the edges of the road. I'm also gonna have my trees look like they're springtime trees. Maybe there's a couple of little blossoms in there. So you can certainly feel free to do however you want and you can have different shades of pink too. So I have my pink color on my brush and these are gonna be very impressionistic kind of flowers. Nothing that's gonna look like a distinct flower, you or you know, an identical tulip or anything like that. I'm just gonna kind of give myself some dots at bigger on the left, and then they're gonna go smaller and smaller as they go away. That'll make it look like they are um, traveling farther away away. I just picked up some white to add little pops of highlights on some of these. So I'm gonna have it multi-toned, and if you want some darkness, I just picked up some red. So feel free to have fun with however you want these. So pink, red, and white is my color combination for these. I'm picking up some of my pink. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just little pops of, of 
circles and dots and just having fun with how I want this to look. Again, I'm not covering up all of my um, my grass either. I'm putting some some flowers in the middle of it or you know sporadically throughout it, but I, I don't want to cover it all up. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white now, maybe a little highlights on some of these. And of course, make yours however you want, maybe a little bit more red to get some some dark tones in there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up here, but less, probably just less. So whatever I have on my brush, I right now have pink, red, and white. I'm just gonna go right along this little edge of my, of my landscape up into here. Maybe these blossoms have fallen off the trees, or maybe they're just nestled in a meadow somewhere. Maybe I've got a couple on the tips of the the tops of the trees and again you don't have to do much in order to kind of give a story so if i want these to look like they're springtime trees just this little pop of pink will tell the viewer that there's some blossoms on there that you know just haven't haven't fallen off yet so it, it just these little cues to the viewer helps to sell that that story of a season or a reason or you know things of that nature i'm just picked up my my pink again just kind of dotting up in through here and you can of course make yours whatever way you want just little hints of it on top of this tree maybe we've got a little bit more over here because it's closer to us and again just polka dots <laughs> i'm not doing anything fancy just using the tip of that brush maybe we've got a couple on the other side of the street in through here and then i'm going to pick up a touch of white just to give myself a little little sunshine pops on top of these so multiple colors will also make it look more realistic if you're using just one color throughout a particular um, process it will tend to look flat even if you're doing something on top of another detail that you have done if you if you choose to just use one color it will it'll end up looking a little flat and that's looking pretty good to me so i think i'm going to call it on that one um, we're going to use our small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our sign and our bride's veil headpiece. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are red, white, and maybe a little bit of black as well. So I'm gonna start with my words on my sign. So I'm obviously writing just married, but you can write the people's names, you can do date, you can do whatever you want. Um, you could certainly pencil this in first, I'm going to be um, doing mine at an angle like this. I'm using red and I have um, thinned it out a little bit with water, but you could certainly um, you know, use whatever method is comfortable for you in order to get your paint to flow the way that you want it. I like to go and do one layer just with whatever happens with the um, with it being thin or thick, and then I'll come back and do a second layer on it so I can clean up any edges that I need to. So I am doing my M in through here, so I'm doing mine at an angle, and you can certainly do any kind of fancy scrolling if you want to. Um, I'm just trying to keep my paint nice and fluid so I can have a um, kind of a pointy tip. And again, if, it, if my paint appears to be a bit transparent or translucent at times, that's just because there is, um, I've got more fluid in it in order to keep the edge of my brush nice and pointy. So, and try not to misspell it. <laughs> I've, I've had many of occasions where either myself or somebody in a class has misspelled a word unintentionally. <laughs> and then I would just kind of go back, like I see that this A is a little um, thin on in certain areas, but I might wanna just let that dry before I come back and do the second coat on it. So now that I've got that on, I'm gonna put a little bit of 
oh, I need to dot my I right into there. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit of dimension into my sign itself. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I want it to look like it's popped out a little bit from the car. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna put a nice dark shadow underneath this right side. So I'm gonna use black with a little bit of water on my brush. And I'm gonna kind of just outline the right side of here, but I'm gonna bump it out just a little bit to take on the shape of the curve of the heart. So something like that. And then just bring it in through here. And then it's gonna be down on the side of the bumper like that don't pull it past the bumper into the ground because it wouldn't it wouldn't put a shadow on the ground there so something like this and of course yours doesn't have to be as firm as a shadow as mine now i'm going to uh, without washing my brush i'm picking up some brown paint because i want another um kind of shadow around the uh, the top of it but i don't necessarily need it to be as strong as this one in through here. So I picked up on my dirty brush a little bit of brown and I'm just gonna kind of give myself this uh, little faint outline. So it looks like maybe it's pulled away from the car a little bit or maybe it's got a little bit of thickness to it or something around the edges. So that way it just doesn't look um, too flat. And I'm just using uh, the tip of my brush to give myself this little bit of an outline around it and of course you don't have to do it exactly as mine and maybe I've got a little bit of shadow over in through here as well whoops that went right into the sign <laughs> if you go into the sign you can fix it with white <laughs> so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush now I'm gonna get it do the veil on my bride so I'm gonna be using water and white paint on my brush I want a lot of fluidity on my brush so I can have this translucency in her veil I know that I wanted to come out from the bottom of her um, bun in through here and I want it to look like the wind is kind of taking it so I'm gonna come down in in through this direction and I'm gonna just kind of bring it up and just kind of flick it out like that I want it to look like fabric I want it to look like it's see-through, so I, I keep dipping my brush in water in order to get the translucency of the, of the fabric. And you don't have to paint the whole thing. You just want, you know, if you can get some, some bit of translucency, that's awesome. I'm gonna do a, kind of this wavy piece kind of coming over the backside of the car. And the more water you have in your paint mixture, the more it will be see-through. The more paint you have, the more vibrant it's gonna be, the more you'll see that white. So I'm gonna just kind of give myself some edges to the veil over in through here. So it's maybe just kind of coming down on the edge of the car. I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter where I want it to look like it is kind of billowing up from the wind. So I'll put a little bit more brightness in through there and then just kind of bring that translucency through the rest. Now I'm gonna pick up just white paint. So I've got it all in place. Now what I'm gonna do is add some extra bits of white without water on my brush or without extra water on my brush. So this, because I started the process with the translucency of the white paint, now adding these um, parts without the without more water in them, this is gonna allow you to see these edges on top of um, on top of the car, it'll help you to identify the length of the um, of the veil and all that good stuff. And you can just kind of keep fiddling with that. I'm going to put some little details. Of, I want her to wear like a little head uh, flower piece around her bun. So I just washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up some red paint. I'm going to do some little red polka dots around her bun in through here. So that'll imply that maybe there's some little flowers or something that are kind of holding this all together. And then I'm gonna pick up some white on my dirty brush and just give some little white polka dots throughout the red polka dots. <laughs> so that'll make it look nice. And um, I think I want her veil actually to come a little bit further over on this left side. I just washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up a little bit more of that watered down white. I feel like I want it to kind of come around her head in through here and maybe kind of 
hide a little bit more of the bot the side of her head in through here so that's you know that's how you do it just keep fiddling with it where if you feel like there's something that you want to disguise or hide just put a little piece of veil in front of it or you know whatever is going to going to work for your eye and then we are going to be using this small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint bumper guards and cans <laughs> i don't think i'd ever i could never imagine myself ever have seen that sentence we're going to paint bumper guards and cans <laughs> anyways i'm using my small brush i'm going to be using black brown blue white and that might be it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put two i don't even know if these are called bumper guards but I'm not a car person, so that's what I'm going to call them. There are these two metal pieces on the on the outside of the bumper, so they sound like bumper guards to me. And I'm going to have them kind of curved, so they look like they're going around the bumper. And then I'm going to have some strings coming off of my sign that are going to be attached to some cans that will make noise when these people travel down the road. So I'm going to start with some black and white on my brush at the same time. These are going to be my my bumper guards. So I'm just going to kind of give myself a little mark for reference. I'm going to go about halfway between these two and about halfway down um, towards my bumper. So about halfway between these two and halfway down towards my bumper. And then I'm just going to kind of curve this like this and just go just past my bumper like that and i'm pushing my brush pretty hard so i have a, a wider line with this small brush that i'm using so something like this i think is good and i went just past my my bumper itself so i'm going to do the same thing on the other side so black and white and i'm going to just kind of push my brush pretty hard and do a kind of curved line over my bumper and just past my bumper a little bit and again I, I you know these don't have to be perfect I don't think anything I paint ever has to be perfect that's the joy of painting so now that I've got that on there I'm gonna let that sit for a minute because I'm gonna want to put I want it to be shiny looking so I want to put some other colors but I need to let it sit for a minute so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush I'm gonna put my strings on I'm gonna use just black paint to start I'm gonna put um, couple of holes in my sign so I'm gonna have one I'll put a little hole in through right about here and then maybe I'll have a little hole right here and I'm just gonna put um, a couple of strings coming down where I feel that that they would have fun <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of have this one coming down here and just trailing off as if the wind is taking it so again i've got a little bit of water on my brush just so i can um, have the fluidity so i'm going to have this one kind of coming down like this and maybe we'll have one of the cans kind of coming this way we'll have one kind of coming up like this and then maybe we'll have another one kind of coming over and down like this so i'm going to have like some of these cans might we might only see part of them as they are um, trailing off of the car so you don't have to have the full um, space for the full can if you don't want to so this one I'm going to just kind of bring down in through here and then maybe this goes over in this direction and I'll show you how to put some shadows on and stuff so I'm going to bring this one in through here and then maybe we've got one that kind of disconnects and comes here and then I'm going to just do these um, kind of rectangle type of shapes. I think I want to move this like this so we can see this a little bit better. So I'm going to have kind of just a, a rectangle type of shape and if it goes off the canvas, so be it. We'll be able to, um, we'll just be seeing part of it. This one in through here, I'm going to make them come at like different angles too. So they look like they're clinking and clanking as they're um, being kind of thrown about maybe this one goes a little bit in this direction and i'm thinking that they're like just little tin cans they could be of different sizes maybe the size of like a soda can or something but 
I'm definitely not measuring mine, so I'm sure one of mine is going to be bigger than the other. And, you know, we're going to just say that they are, uh, you know, kind of vintage old cans. Maybe one's a soup can, maybe one's a soda can. So when they're different sizes, we have an excuse why they're different sizes. <laughs> this one is going to be flip, flipping up. So just kind of making myself a little rectangle kind of shape there. And then this one's going to just kind of go off the canvas in through here. So while those are drying and the black is kind of settling on those ones, I'll go do my little details on my bumper um, guards. So I just need a little bit of a shadow. I have the black on my brush, so I'm just going to put a little bit of a shadow kind of on the inset of that. Yours might be dark enough at this point where you don't really need the, the shadow, but I'm just kind of making sure that we can identify the edge of it and then I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush I'm gonna pick up brown and white brown and white to just give myself a couple of little streaks down these brown and white maybe taking on some of the colors in the surroundings maybe a little bit of white I'm picking up white now to put just a real kind of bright spot up at the top and then just pulling it down and again I just want this to kind of look shiny so utilizing those the brown and the white is just going to help me pull in some of the colors from the surrounding area you could certainly i'm going to probably use a little blue too um again just to make it look shiny so i'm picking up a tiny bit of blue right now just i don't know if i said i was going to use blue but i am just pull that in all right so now i'm going to head down to my to my um strings i'm picking up brown and white to add a little highlight on the string itself. So this is brown and white. Oops, I just had a little red on my brush too. I picked up red by accident, so now I have to wash and dry my brush. <laughs> so brown and white is where I've got uh, my brush right now. And this is, I'm just gonna add these little um, streaks onto the strings. So I'm not gonna take away all of the black. I'm just adding these little streaks so it looks like a little piece of them is maybe catching a highlight from the sky above. So again, just brown and white. I don't necessarily need to go all the way white, which is why I'm using the brown and white at the same time. And I'm just streaking it in here like this. I'm gonna do the same thing on the cans themselves. So uh, brown and white, I am considering these cans to be round so if I give this highlight a little bit of a curve that's going to make it look round so brown and white is where what I have on my brush right now I'm just kind of taking the top of that can giving it a little bit of a curved highlight and that'll make it look like it is being illuminated. Uh, I'm gonna actually pick up blue now. So any combination of brown, blue, and white can work for this uh, little highlight on your cans. I just kind of add it on there and then just pull it in a curved type of manner and that's gonna give the viewer, again, that, that information of the shape of it. So if I want this to be the top, I just I can put my line and then just kind of pull it in the curved direction that I want that can to appear that it is having its shape. So the white or whatever I have on my brush, I have I have white and blue on my brush right now, I think. So oh, any combination, I'm using white, blue, and brown. So any combination of those three colors is on my brush right now. <laughs> white, blue, and brown, and here too. And then once I've got them kind of in place, I'm gonna uh, pick up a tiny bit of white just to give myself, if I can see the edge of it, I can give myself like a little curve on that exterior edge that could help to make it pop out as um, the edge of an open can. I don't even know, I think that might be the only one that I can do it on. I thought I had more, maybe, maybe this one too. We can do a little bit on the edge of this. Again, just giving the viewer as much information as I feel I can for them to fail I can on the cans <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, but you can certainly keep elevating those highlights now I just want to do a little shadow underneath the cans so they look like they're off the ground 
Um, and so they look like they're kind of flying in the air. So in order to do that, the shadows have to be away from the object itself. So I'm going to be using black plus a little bit of water so my shadows are transparent and you can see the stuff underneath it. So if I want these strings to look like they're away from the ground a little bit, what I can do is I can pull my shadow a little bit away like this. So that's going to indicate that they are off the ground. My shadow is lighter than the object itself. It is a darker version of the surface that it sits on. So I could even put a kind of a dark shadow underneath here. So this looks like it's the shadow of that can. This one I don't think would have a shadow because it I will picturing that one to be way up in the air. This one right here, if I want that to look a little bit away from the ground, I can put the shadow a little bit further away from the object. So that'll tell the viewer that the, um, that the object is lifted off of the, off of the ground a little bit. That's a nice shadow. Let me just darken this one up a little bit too. I liked the darkness of it. Um, that works. And then maybe I've got a couple of little shadows underneath this string so something like that and again the water on your brush will will help to um, sell that story and maybe a little bit in through here so just various little lines will help um, to make those shadows look like or make those strings look more three-dimensional if you disconnect that shadow from from the string itself and then you can fiddle with it all you want. We're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So when you've got this done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. You could certainly sign yours wherever you want. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going black paint, bottom left. I like to sign mine with my initials but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like to do is totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very sweet and sentimental image. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.